Hey what's up guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So pretty excited today, I've got another gimbal review. This is the Moza Mini S from a company called Goodson. And this is the, the world's smallest, lightest and folding gimbal for your smartphones. So let's go ahead and take a look what's in the box and give you a little overview. All right, so let's go ahead, take a look in the box. Right, so we have the uh, user guide here. Let's go and see what's inside here. Yep, yeah, just a quick start guide. Put that to the side. You also have a smartphone connection cable. And you also have a carry case for the actual gimbal. So this is pretty convenient when you want to take it with you. It actually feels a little bit like suede, so that's pretty cool. Then you also have the tripod. So this is um, made of plastic, it's not heavy duty metal but for this size gimbal, it actually does a really good job. So you've got the uh, quarter screw there as well. And then finally, you have the gimbal itself. So again, it's uh, made of uh, sort of a heavy duty plastic. It doesn't feel like it will break, but it's uh, one of those things that you just have to be careful in case you drop this or anything like that. So let me go ahead and give you an overview of what each of these uh, buttons do on the actual gimbal. Right, so here we have the gimbal. So just to give you a quick overview on the design, it's actually 7.7 .7 inches in height and it's 5.1 inches in width. So it's not quite pocket friendly, but it's very easily taken in any backpack or any small bag that you have. It's actually quite light. It's only 260 grams in weight, which is very, very light compared to other uh, gimbals that you may have used in the past, especially DSLR ones, which are well over a kilogram in weight in general. So this is the um, switch here to actually open up the gimbal. So let me go ahead and pull that back and then twist it from this angle here. And there you have there. So even in uh, the full view, it's actually uh, not very tall and you can see that it's uh, quite compact uh, in itself. Right, to so fold it back, you basically pull the switch back, you twist it, and then you just make sure that the uh, actual axis is straight and it should click back in place and that is locked. So very straightforward. Now let me go ahead and give you an overview of the different buttons on this. Right, so you have the uh, USB-C charging port here. So it takes a couple of hours to fully charge and you should be able to get about six to eight hours depending on your usage of actually the gimbal usage. This is the uh, power button. So you just hold that down to power it on. Right, so just looking at the uh, buttons on the front, you have your joystick here to control the actual gimbal. You have your main picture button right there in the middle. You can also use that to start recording video. You have the uh, playback button here on the right hand side. On the bottom, you have the inception mode button. So that's the mode I will be showing you shortly. On the left hand side is the uh, mode option button. So you can switch between all the different modes like follow, fast follow and so on. And then at the top here, you have the uh, menu and the uh, portrait and landscape switch button. So that's a really convenient feature when you want to switch your phone from landscape view to automatically into portrait view, which is something rare on a lot of smartphone gimbals. On the right hand side, you have the uh, zoom controls. So this is the telephoto and the wide angle buttons here for compatible phones with uh, zoom capabilities. And depending on what you're using in the app, you can actually use this to focus as well. Now just opening this up, now on the back you have the function button which actually allows you to recenter the gimbal. And on the side of the actual gimbal at the top where the phone goes, you have the USB type B data port so you can connect your phone with any adapters and use that to connect maybe microphones and that kind of stuff. At the bottom of the gimbal, you have the quarter inch screw which you can put in the actual tripod stand as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. Right, so I've got my Samsung S10 Plus onto the gimbal. So to start it up, I would suggest you just hold it into place. You hold down the power button and let it adjust itself like so. There we go, it's very straight. Now I've downloaded the uh, Mozart Genie app. So you'll have to download that to get the full capabilities of using the buttons. So I'll leave a link in the description below where you can uh, download that one. So let me go ahead and give you guys an overview of what the uh, capabilities of that application is. Right, so here we are. I've got the uh, Moza app open. So now I can go ahead and start using this as a smartphone gimbal. So if you don't use any functionality, it does a very good job just giving you smooth footage. You've got the uh, pan axis is enabled by default. 
it doesn't have the uh, tilt axis enabled but there is a, a few modes that this comes with so just to give you an idea of the interface so on the top left you can actually see the battery percentage on the application on the top right you can see the actual resolution and the frames per second that you're shooting in you can see if the uh, camera has the flash on or not so you have the gallery button there on the bottom left just to see what videos you've just taken as a test you also have the bluetooth connection button so if i press that this brings up the uh, connection with the gimbal so i'm going to go ahead and connect that now in terms of the connection with the application and the gimbal this works very well with iPhones and there's been some issues in the past with the firmware not being currently updated for the latest flagship Android phones but I've connected it to my Samsung S10 Plus and it should work fine for the majority of them so keep an eye out if you have an Android phone to uh, update your firmware as uh, quickly as possible before you start using the application. Then on the right hand side you have the actual motion tracking button there on the bottom left so this one allows you to set a target, let the target move around and the gimbal will start moving itself following that object. Then on the right hand side you can actually switch the camera around, go to the settings and hit record. So pretty straightforward, so let me go ahead and give you some samples. So hitting the button at the top of the joystick brings up the menu. So you have various different options, I can switch it around to the selfie mode. So let me go ahead and do that now, as you can see there, very smooth. So I can switch that back to you guys. You've got the flash, the anti-shake option, different types of shooting modes. So let me go ahead and select that. So you have a photo, which is this one. I'll go ahead and take a quick snapshot of that. Bring up the menu again using the top button. So you also have time-lapse photography, motion time-lapse, which the gimbal moves very slowly and you have slow motion as well. And then you've also got taking pictures so quite a few different options but there's also some other really cool options that you can do using this gimbal now just to give you an idea of the five different recording modes that this gimbal comes with the first one is time lapse mode which is obviously pretty straightforward you get that in uh, the majority of smartphones and gimbals then the next one is object tracking you can set a target and let that object move and it will follow accordingly the third one is vertigo shot and this is sometimes also referred to as dolly zoom so you have a, a subject in front of you the background seems to be getting further away at the same time you're zooming in so it's just stretching out and giving this vertigo kind of effect which is pretty cool so i'll give you an example of that the next one is inception mode so if you've seen the movie inception you see there's a lot of movements where the camera sort of tilts and rolls into like almost going into a rotation so there's a capability of doing that on this gimbal as well inside the app and then the last one is portrait mode so this actual gimbal can actually switch between landscape and portrait so not a lot of gimbals do that you mostly will see them recording on landscape but that's a very nice feature to have then there's the three most common follow modes you have the normal follow you have the fast follow for maybe sports or racing cars and that kind of stuff and you also have locked to keep the gimbal and axes fixed in a specific position so those are all the different types of recording and follow modes so let's go ahead and give you some sample footage of things i've created in some of those different modes as well and let me know what you guys think
All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Now this comes in at $79. I'll leave a link in the description below on where you can purchase this. And if you have any other questions of anything you'd like me to review on this, then please do let me know. I'll be taking a few more snapshots, pictures, time-lapse motions and that kind of stuff. I'll put it onto my Instagram at Training Reviews, so make sure you catch me on that. But other than that, hopefully this was useful. I hope you liked this video. I hope you subscribe and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.